Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Mariah Robinson. Did you know almost 59% of Cal State Northridge students commute to campus by car? That's more than half of CSUN's 40,000 students and an estimated 200,000 cars a week. CSUN and Los Angeles County officials are trying to get more matadors out of their cars and onto public transportation services. Transit officials have proposed a sales tax measure that will be on the ballot this November. It would go toward new transit and highway projects costing $120 billion over the next 50 years. Some projects in the proposal include a rail tunnel through the Sepulveda Pass and a light rail on Van Nuys Boulevard. CSUN President Diane Harrison is an advocate for making the campus more accessible. She spoke at the Valley Transportation Summit last month and said more transportation options need to be brought to the university. Here at CSUN, a robust transit system that serves the needs of our students could mean a student being able to better balance a very busy class schedule and a part-time job, sometimes more than one job. We spoke to students on campus about their experiences with public transportation to see why they do or don't use public transit. Where I commute from is pretty far, so I wouldn't really consider the bus at all. Well, I live in the downtown Los Angeles area, and it takes around two hours to get here. So I have to time myself, like wake up early, get the bus on time, and then come here on time to my classes. It's of the utmost importance that the school and the metro both take responsibility and perhaps work together to get students that wouldn't normally be able to get here access to the same education that everybody has. My way of transportation to CSUN is by taking my car here. I park on the side of the street and from there I take my skateboard and then from my skateboard I um, make my way around campus basically. I mean how hard would it be to just have a rapid bus that goes on what I would call like the north side of town instead of like the orange line which is clearly closer to the nicer part of town. So I mean it seems kind of like a class issue because if you're down in like you know, Pacoima or North Hills or whatever, suddenly the buses don't run as good. Making sure that the prices don't get out of hand, you know, it seems like every semester it's like a dime more or something, or at least when I used to, it was always like every semester it seemed like a quarter or a dime on each different um, mode of transportation, but it, it adds up. I like the red line, I use the red line all the time, so if they had a train like the orange line that went to CSUN, I would be on it. On points, Jarvis Heron has more. Thanks, Mariah. We got a great panel for you today. Let's go ahead and meet him. Sitting to my left is Ken Primo, the manager of support services with Associated Students here at CSUN, Professor Craig Olwertz from the Department of Urban Studies and Planning, and last but certainly not least, we have Larry Isro, the Parking and Transportation Services Manager here at CSUN. Welcome, Mr. Thank Isro. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for coming in today. Uh, let's get right to it. Um, tell the viewers, LA residents, CSUN students, why they should care about this issue in terms of public transportation. Ken, let's start with you. Okay. Um, well, particularly in the Valley, uh, public transportation has been rather overlooked for years. We had a, a tax increase several years ago that was supposed to expand the transportation options throughout the Los Angeles area, but it kind of overlooked the Valley. There is limited service, and any student who, who comes to the university knows that they can't easily get from place to place. There's just not a lot of stops. There's not a lot of options. Professor? I always look at it as a sustainability issue. So it's a matter of getting people out of their cars, if we get people living closer to where they work or getting them on transit. You know, we protect the environment, and long term, we get a better city. Larry? Yeah, it's important to understand the, the dire need for a sustainable and a well um, transit system because we have a population of 50,000 people here on campus and um, 25,000 of them, faculty seven students, live in a 10 mile radius. And if we can get those people off out of their cars and come to campus, it would be very sustainable and reduce mm -hmm. the, the traffic flow around campus. Yeah, good point. Uh, Ken, why don't you just give us some examples of what CSUN students have to go through um, to get to campus when it comes to public transit? Well, um, particularly we have examples of uh, or stories from some of our students, particularly the ones who live downtown, that it can take them three to four transfers to get here and it can take them two hours. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge portion of the day for a student, especially because most of our students are also working outside of their class. So um, huge issues for students. Um, you know, what do, even, what about the students, you know, that, you know, drive, you know, to school? Is there, what do they? Well, the issue for the, for students who drive is not only is it costly, but they, they, uh, 
create traffic around the university, they create traffic through the neighborhoods, parking is an issue, and a lot of the students will park throughout the neighborhoods nearby, which makes the, the adjacent community unhappy, and we don't want that. Craig, is there anything you want to add to that? I know, you know, you... you... Yeah, we had, we had one student, and she came from East L.A., and she actually, because of using transit, she would spend two to three hours coming to class, yeah. and she actually, we were talking about doing a class on, like, a, a Saturday field trip, and she's like, well, I can't afford to come because I only have so much transit money, and that's not budgetable. So, I mean, good yeah. transit that's reliable would actually help our students a lot. Mm. Craig, I know, um, you know, if you go back to, like, the early 1920s in Los Angeles, you know, it was, they had the red car system. Right very, you know, it seemed effective, people were using it, it was popular. How did LA go from having that to all of a sudden just becoming so dependent on the car? It was, I mean, it's just easy, easy transportation. It lets you go fast. You weren't re relying on the system to have to be stuck on a, a route. And so as suburbanization increased and people wanted single family lots, you don't have a high enough density to, to support a transit system. So basically, as we grew into suburbs, we lost the transit system. Uh, you know, if you look at some of these cities on the, you know, the East Coast, they were built, you know, with public transportation in mind, whether it's New York with the subways or Chicago with the L, even Boston and D.C. have right. their metro systems. Is L.A. too late in the game, you think, in trying to add public transit? No, I mean, they're, the subway system's been, I think, fairly successful. The orange line was incredibly successful when they added it. So the subway line in Los Angeles, you mean? Yeah, the red okay. line and the, okay. the blue lines. And then the orange line that they opened here, the BRT system, they exceeded ridership numbers within years. I mean, so there is a demand for it. And as we keep allow, allowing more high density to be built around those stations, eventually you'll start seeing an increase of ridership as well. Well, it's interesting that you talk about increase because uh, I want to get you guys' thoughts on this. We'll start with Larry first, but the LA Times, they published an article in the early of February, and they were talking about how uh, there's actually been a decline in metro ridership across the county. They say that MTA, they lost more than 10 percent of its boardings from 2006 to 2015, and they say they metro has fewer boardings than it did three decades ago. Larry, do you think improved public transit is really a necessity when the numbers are showing that maybe countywide it's on the decline? I don't think people will use transit unless it's convenient. And right now our current public transit system is not convenient. Um, we did a study on campus that showed that 57% of people would be inclined to take the bus if they only had to take one bus. Once you have to start making transfers, it becomes inconvenient and too time consuming and people won't do that and they become dependent upon their vehicles. But the important part is to think about our students is that if they're not able to get to school, maybe they don't have a car, if they're not able to take a, a bus to school, to campus, then they might not be able to get their education. If they need that to, depend to get them to a job to help them pay for class, they need that dependency and they need that system to be reliable and to basically mirror the class schedules as well. Ken, or Ken, do you want to add anything to what Larry was saying? Um, yeah, just uh, a little bit on it. Our, our students have real trouble. The last point you brought up is that the bus routes don't mirror the class schedules. The last bus that, are, that goes regularly into the evening is at 9 o'clock. But as we all know, classes will go to 10. And so students will have to wait an hour after they get out of class just to get on the bus. So... We're really trying to uh, work with Metro, well, the university is, to get them to more closely mirror the class schedule so that the availability is there. Like Larry said, convenience is of utmost importance or you don't get ridership. Craig? Yeah, we did a study a couple years ago looking at um, bike riders using the, uh, the orange line. Mm -hmm. And the evening users were the ones that we had the most problems with because they only ran like two buses per hour and you only have room for three on each bus. And so they actually increased it from 2013, 12 to 2013 to three per hour in the evening. And we actually found that the amount of people left behind who got stranded was a lot less. Mm -hmm. And we found that the stations that had the most problems were Reseda, um, where, where Valley College and Pierce College were. So the students were the ones that were using it, trying to get into North Hollywood, you know, using the orange line. And, mm -hmm. and if you talk to the people, if they got stuck behind, they knew the next wait was gonna be another 20 minutes at the very least, a lot of them just decided they were going to then ride all the way to yeah. North Hollywood. 
So mm -hmm. better transit service and obviously the direct connection would be best. So if it's more efficient, you think those numbers would maybe increase again it's not a matter of people not wanting to ride it's just a matter right. of okay mm -hmm. okay interesting well i want to uh, check out a soundbite really quick this is uh, la mayor eric garcetti talking about uh we'll get to it in a minute this is garcetti <laughs> talking about um you know public transit in the uh, valley this was from the transportation summit last month let's take a look let's get the stuff that was already in measure r done let's make sure that we deliver on those next let's figure out ways that we can improve and look to new things San Fernando Valley is still a place that is ripe for other BRT lines, bus rapid transit lines. CSUN should not be ignored in that conversation, and you have my support ensuring that we drive dollars and that we drive lines to here. Larry, you know, there's been numerous options that have been proposed in the last couple weeks for the Valley, you know, whether it's a, you know, a Sepulveda Fat Pass tunnel, toll roads on the 405, but it seems like nothing really specifically for CSUN. How come you think it's been so difficult to get transit options to the valley and to the university? Well, I think that time is starting to change. We've been working with policymakers and um, community leaders to work with the different transportation groups. Uh, one quick point I wanted to add, Metro has did, basically committed this year, coming up in fall this semester, to align their bus schedules with the class schedule. So uh, it's important it's to recognize huge. they're willing yeah. to work with us. Um, but there are a number of initiatives that we're working with, as I mentioned, the policy leaders around town in terms of the mayor as well as the senators and community leaders to help us meet our CSUN needs. Again, we think that we should be a transit hub, a regional transit hub. Uh, as an example, we'd like to see uh, the transit center and CSUN connect with the uh, proposed Valley, uh, East Valley Transit Corridor rail system via Nordoff. That could be a rapid bus transit. Um, we'd also like to see the, um, the transportation center, or excuse me, the transit center um, have in, improvements made to it so that we can increase the, the volume and number of lines that are coming into there so we can have uh, more of a mass transit hub, as well as we'd like to increase the scheduling, as I mentioned earlier, for the class schedule, which is going to happen, and then also the uh, nearly 25,000 half our population on campus that live within a 10-mile radius have the bus service serve them. So that's a, a big, significant uh, impact on the community, not just the CSUN community, but the community around us. Ken, what do you think, um, you know, CSUN uh, students or faculty can do to make sure the voice is heard in terms of being like, we, we need, we want or need these options here? <clears throat> well. Fortunately, we have a university president who really believes in sustainability, and so she is actually pushing this, this initiative to have uh, better transit service to the campus. One of the things is when you get students accustomed to driving to campus and parking on campus, it's hard to break that habit. When you have options for them, then they can say, oh, you know, this actually makes more sense or this is easier. Um, really, students can get out and start trying alternative transit, um, see if it can work for them. As Larry has pointed out, that uh, half our population live within 10 miles. So it, right now, it's not as good an opportunity for the students who live farther out, but half of our population live within 10 miles. Who wants to pay for parking when you could just ride a bus? Larry, in a perfect world, what is CSUN's ultimate goal when it comes to, um, you know, public transportation options? Well, I think that's a multi-part question. One is we'd like to see less vehicles on campus to create a more sustainable environment. We'd like to see the use of public transportation increased and uh, alternative modes of transportation, not just the bus, but it could be walking, it could be riding your bicycle to work to campus, um, and work including for faculty and staff. Um, I think to be to have a good mix of that and to reduce our vehicular uh, volume on campus as well and to reduce our sustainability of the carbon, carbon dioxide uh, that is being left because we have about 45,000 tons annually that's produced by the vehicles that come on campus. Do, do you think that, is the university trying, do you think, you know, they're like, okay, we need to improve public transportation options for the folks that it takes two hours to get here or do you think it's a matter of the university going, wow, we have a ton of cars parking or coming to campus and parking. We even have cars parking around the neighborhoods. Is it more trying to improve the 
options for the people that it takes two hours, or do you think is the university more their goal trying to reduce the traffic and the congestion? I think it's a little bit of a combination. Um, I think that uh, it's also a lifestyle. We need to embed in people that public transportation is an option. It's not a great option right now just because of the, the lack of convenient scheduling for many users. When we can get to that point, then I see it as a more convenient use. Then users will jump on board, I think, and um, use that more. However, we do want to get the cars off the residence streets in the immediate area, you know, for the neighborhood to um, get those cars into our parking lots, but also minimize them. We want to see, you know, kind of a happy medium, a balance, if you will. Yeah, it, there was a recent study a couple weeks ago that says LA was is the most congested city in the nation. Mm -hmm. Is there anything CSUN is maybe like doing now in the short term, maybe to look into cutting down the congestion or? Well, we are certainly always trying to incentivize alternative modes of transportation, whether it be um, offering incentives in our pricing for our parking structures, our parking lots that uh, you can park in, um, also carpooling, van pooling. Um, we've installed a number of new uh, bike locks on uh, compounds and um, bike shelters on campus. So anything we can do to promote alternative modes of transportation to reduce the amount of vehicles coming on campus and help the community in the surrounding area would be done. All right, um, let's go to another clip. This is uh, California State Senator Bob Hertzberg. Uh, he's been a big advocate for mm -hmm. bringing transit options to the Valley, as you all know. Hear what he had to say about what it would mean to have more options in the Valley. Let's take a look at that right now. If you, when you go and you show a big picture map of the valley and you include a, a, a bus rapid transit coming down Nordoff and one coming up Reseda or wherever it ultimately becomes that serves the transit hub here, it sends a message that the Northwest Valley is included as part of this larger transportation plan. Who wants to vote for something that they're not part of, they don't get a benefit of? The Northeast Valley benefits because so many students from CSUN come from the Northeast Valley. It fundamentally completes the picture of the San Fernando Valley. Craig, how do you think turning CSUN in, you know, an ideal into a transportation hub, if you will, how would that change, you think, surrounding businesses and residential development? Well, if you have good access, you have the ability then to start building up more apartments. And there's been development pressures, like with, North, with the Reseda, they've been working on redeveloping the Great Street Reseda. And so there, I think there you have the ability then to actually start putting more apartments in there, where people could then... A, there's more housing availability, so they might just choose to live. It's a cool place. I'll live there and I'll walk to see sun. Or it's convenient with other transit that I could actually connect in with the rest of the city. So they might actually just choose Northridge as a great place to live, not just access to CSUN. I'm curious all to get your thoughts because it was about a week or two ago, I believe those two apartment towers got approved in Hollywood. And it seems there's kind of been a lot of controversy about that. You have the developers saying, oh, this is going to be great. It's right. by, you know, the the orange line, the expo line, whatever line that is. Uh, uh, purple line. Purple line, the excuse red. me, uh, thank you. By, the, by there and it's saying, oh, you know, get, you know, kind of like a little, you know, area for them. Right. They can ride the trains. And then, but it seems to be a lot of controversy in terms of, you know, they're saying uh, those projects add more congestion and there's residents already trying to petition to overturn that project. What's kind of your thoughts on that. I think long term it is the right thing to do. You want you want that density if you want people using transit. Sustainability is what you want. The other option is to have those people live in the Inland Empire and drive all the way downtown, which creates more traffic for 40 miles for everybody. So I think long term you really do want that. Um, short term it's going to be inconvenient and be inconvenient in that local area, but that will help people then choose to walk. It'll help them to use transit, bikes, so they'll start using other alternatives that are less crowded. Ken, what do you think? Well, I have to agree. And remember, people don't like change. They they like the neighborhood they were in. They don't want to see that move towards another model. And that's really what has to happen in Los Angeles. We do have to move towards other models. And, uh, and there's been another proposal in terms, kind of what Senator Hertzberg was saying. They, you know, in terms of adding light rail on Van Nuys Boulevard. How would that impact CSUN, you think, uh, Larry? I think it would be helpful. I think it would add to the convenience factor for students and or faculty or staff who might be engaged to and willing to take that. Um, I think it would help maybe remove some cars off the streets, which is obviously helpful. Larry? Er, I'm sorry, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with Larry. You know, we're, we're trying so many programs to make it more convenient, and that would be one of those things that would add convenience to getting to this part of the valley. Um, 
as Senator Hertzberg said, you know, the northwest part of the valley is really seriously underserved by public transit. That's something any addition makes it better. Craig. I, I don't know if that's going to help that much. <laughs> I, in terms of building a network, I think it's great. In terms of helping our students, I think it's far enough away that's sort of like the orange line where you still mm -hmm. have to go all the way proceed to catch a different line, so you still have the transfer. So I think, yeah, I think it's building out the network in, in terms of that, that's good. In terms of it directly helping our students, I think it's going to be marginal. What's an option you think would be maybe better? Uh, running the light rail up Presida, <laughs> you know, or mm -hmm. or if they're talking about like the BRT on the Nordoff, correct? That would that would help. Um, my idea would be that they'd actually put a subway line all the way to here, but I don't oh. think that I don't think that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, one of the things too that's kind of interesting about this is that you know this initiative most likely going to be on the November ballot, and they're saying it's going to need two thirds majority mm -hmm. to pass. And the other thing too is. And it seems one, that's one of the difficulties anyway, getting the two-thirds majority to get that to pass. But the other thing is that you're going to have folks possibly voting on this, and they may not even see, you know, the plans come to fruition in their lifetime if they're saying some of this stuff is going to take, you know, five decades, right. you know, whatever. Ken, how do you think the city goes about trying to get support on this? Well, you know, when they passed Measure R previously, and it had to passed by a two-thirds majority. Um, they had a lot of promise about the added transit. Now, that didn't happen in the Valley. And so there is kind of like an unfulfilled promise that we want to see. So basically telling the people of the Valley, which is a huge portion of Los Angeles, that there's going to be options for them, I think is the way they're really going to have to sell this. Craig. I think it'll sell pretty well. I mean, they had a they had an initiative a couple of years ago to extend, and it didn't pass, but it was marginal, and they basically just wanted to extend the ta tax for 30 years, which mm -hmm. didn't seem fair to me because it was like from 2030 to 2050 we extend the tax for people who get the benefit now. Yeah. So it was an illogical, I thought, bad policy. This one is add the tax now for stuff that we'll start building now. So I think it's pretty likely to pass. I I, I don't I don't think they do a hard even sell. with two thirds. You think it? The other one barely failed, so I think okay. is my memory. So I think this one will, I think it'll probably do well. Actually. Interesting, Larry. You know, I think people need to look at the bigger picture, and even though it may not impact them immediately or in their lifetime, it's you have to look at it as well. Is it going to impact others? And it's going to have a huge impact on many, many people. And as the city continues to grow population-wise, you have to be able to create some kind of infrastructure to accommodate the demand. So I think you have to look at the bigger picture, even though it may not impact me, but after I'm gone or later on in life, it's going to help with other, you know, the, the immediate community. Overall, what measures do you think need to be got done to get LA residents, CSUN students, to think, hey, instead of you know the initial reaction is, oh, let me get in my car and go. What do you think needs to be done to get them thinking, hey, the bus is an option, or hey, the light rail is an option? What do you think? Well, we have to make it more familiar and convenient. Once you ride something like the light rail or once you ride something like the bus lines, it, it is easier to ride them again. You, you realize that it's not that foreign, it's not that scary. Um, but it's going to, like Larry even said, uh, it's the convenience factor. If you can't get there and get to where you want to go in one stop, you won't do it. Craig, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with that. The building of the network helps. I know in some of our courses, one of our assignments is go ride a bus mm -hmm. or ride a, a line and tell us your experience. A lot of people have never used it, and they've lived here their whole life in L.A. Yeah. So just getting people used to how to use it will make a big difference because then you're aware that it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Larry? There's some... Um, movement right now and for a bill to be passed that would allow for a universal pass and I think that would be helpful as well that would allow this if it were to go through to have a u universal pass that you can use it all on the different types of um, transportation whether it's metro rail um, metro the buses and, and not have to worry about buying a different pass for the different type of uh, organization I think that coupled with promoting it more to particularly on campus would be very helpful um, and I just think getting the word out and more awareness and the convenience that it is working and I'm able to take the bus where I want to get to in a one-time stop, I think will be helpful. Well, gentlemen, unfortunately, that's all of the time we have today. Thank you all very much for coming on. We really appreciate it. We'll be back with more uh, right after this.
Kids will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Come on, let's go. Just a minute, I gotta finish this. Wait, you're gonna post those pictures of Mary? Yep. She thinks she's so hot. But her mom and dad will see them. Her grandmother, her little sister, everyone she knows, it's gonna kill her. Who cares? Just a couple of pictures. It's no big deal. No big deal? Don't. This has got to stop. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Jarvis, you brought up some pretty good points today. What about you? How do you get to campus every day? Well, personally, Mariah, I bike, but that's only because I live close enough where I'm able to do it. It just works for me just because I don't have to worry about paying for the parking permit every semester, so I'm saving there. And I don't have to worry about finding a parking spot the times I do come to campus. What about you? Well, I actually drive to campus now, but I used to commute by bus from Van Nuys, and it took me about two hours to get to campus. Wow. So driving saved my travel time by a lot. Yeah. But what about the cost? Well, per semester, I pay about 180 for a parking pass, and that's not including filling up my gas tank twice a week or insurance, so if the bus were more convenient for me, I'd definitely be back on public transportation. Do you think other students would do the same as well? Honestly, I think they would. I just think that the keys are making sure that the routes are efficient and making sure that the routes go to the surrounding communities around here so that it gives people choices in their commute. If it can do those two things, people will use it, and I think the initiative has a good shot of passing in November. I agree. <laughs> Thanks, Jarvis. Thank you. And thank you for watching On Point. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at CSUN on Point. You can watch us on LA 36 at 11.30 on Sunday mornings, and you can also listen on KCSN 88.5 FM at 5.30 on Sunday mornings. For all of us here at On Point, I'm Mariah Robinson, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.